Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us for the first installment of our winter workshop. Today, we're going to be focusing on purchase transactions. I'm going to show you a little bit about just comparing some different down payment options. And then I'm also going to show you some more advanced features like MCC credits and how to do FHA 203k loans. So with that said, um, the first thing I want to do, because the beginning of the series, I want to pre-frame the why. I want, I want everybody to understand why it's important that, uh, that you're using the Mortgage Coach Edge, that you're, you're being a consultative educator to your borrowers. So first and foremost, our mission. We're dedicated to ensuring every borrower makes an informed decision based on the total cost of different loan options. That's what the total cost analysis does. It really just looks at several loan options against each other and looks at the, uh, you know, the the cost over time, which is what's in, it's what's really important to the borrowers. You know, a, we start as originators that that you know everybody's just asking for a rate, but what's really the most important thing about the loan is how much is it going to cost the borrower over time. Now, when we take a look at this, we have to examine, you know, what are we delivering? Now, the Mortgage Coach Edge presentation is the ultimate buyer and realtor experience. You can use the Mortgage Coach Viewer app and the Rate Watch app to, you know, basically show it off to your to your clients. But when it comes down to it, it's a dynamic presentation with video that can be delivered via a link and viewed in any browser or iOS or Android device. Now, this is important because it means that you can reach your clients no matter where they're at. It's also the best way for you to educate your borrowers on the long-term effects of mortgages over time. Everybody's putting out fee worksheets. It's been the same thing since 1992. Everybody's been doing that. So what sets you apart? you're able to deliver this total cost analysis that not only shows the payments against each other, but you're showing the short and long-term effects of every loan that you're, you're displaying for them. So why is it so important to deliver a total cost analysis to every borrower? Well, one, we believe that trusted advice is the ultimate competitive advantage. If you believe that you're an advice-based LO, you want to be unique and superior to others in your market. You're setting yourself apart. Everybody else is doing the, the GFE, they're doing a fee worksheet, they're just displaying a real snapshot of what the payment looks like, but you're delivering what the mortgage looks like. And this is far more important because a borrower, this is, this is especially a first-time home borrower, this is the biggest decision they're ever going to make. So you are the person that's going to guide them through this. Furthermore, you want to ensure that your advice follows the presentations. Now, when somebody else sends out a quote, they send out a PDF, they send out something that's static, that doesn't have a dynamic presentation on it. And when it comes down to it, your edge presentation, when you include a video, ensures that your advice goes all the way through the process, no matter who this report is being shared with, whether it's uh, you know, a, a second person in the home mind decision-making process, whether it's uh, you know, a CPA, financial planner, attorney. When you put a video on your presentations and you deliver these, they're portable. So people can pass them around, they can share them, and you can ensure that your advice goes all the way down the line. You don't have to worry about the telephone game. Now, finally, you believe in leveraging the most current technology to deliver a modern mortgage experience. Now, to date, you may have delivered this in several different ways. When we're talking about giving a total cost analysis to a borrower. We're talking about giving them a live presentation that can be changed on the fly, that you can adjust at any time, and especially all throughout the loan process. You know, if things change, rates change, costs change, you can make these changes and be assured that the link that you send them is still going to reflect whatever you most recently put into Edge. And finally, you know that most of today's generation lives on mobile devices. It's really important. In fact, 60 million people each month, each month are using these apps, so it's important for you to have a mobile presence. Now, when we talk about other apps that are in the marketplace, they're not exclusive. You know, they have ads on them, they have links that jump to other people, but your Mortgage Coach Edge experience, there's no links. It's all direct to your borrower. Now, the most important thing, you want to be positioned as an expert by delivering obvious value to both your borrowers and realtor partners. So what does that mean for today's call? When we're talking about purchase transactions, we're talking about something that most people are just showing costs. They're just showing a fee worksheet. 
So where it sets you apart is that you're going to compare different loan options against each other, maybe down payment options, maybe loan types, it doesn't matter. The fact is you're giving multiple options to a borrower who is only getting one option from everybody else. So what are our goals for today? We're going to show you how to show some advanced purchase options. We're going to show you different down payment types, and then I'm going to show you things like the MCC credit. I'm going to show you how to do a construction loan, and I'm going to show you how to do FHA 203K loans in our system. The main goal, stop delivering fee worksheets. Transition to a consultative educator. This is what we strive to be. At Mortgage Coach, we really believe that every borrower deserves this kind of transaction. They deserve this kind of education for every purchase they make, or a refi for that, for that matter. And when it comes down to it, it's up to you. You're the one that can make the difference in their loan experience. So we're giving you the tools to do so. And the last goal, we want you to learn how to deliver loan options in a way that gives you a competitive advantage and motivates your partners to send you even more referrals. It's all about referral. You can collect leads lists all day long, but when it comes down to it, the real ones that, that call you, that, that actually respect your opinion, are the ones that have been referred to you by either a realtor partner, a former borrower, maybe even family. These are the ones that are the warmest leads, so they're the ones we really need to make sure get everything we can possibly get them. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and open up Edge here. And we're going to go through some basics. Now I should mention that uh, as we go through this, if you do have questions, please go ahead and type them into the questions area of the GoToMeeting toolbar. I won't be able to address them live with you today, but I will be pulling an archive of, of every question on this call, and I will make sure that our support team gets to anything that you need help with. We'll make sure you get an email today within a couple hours of the call. Now with that said, let's go ahead and start up a brand new client. And I'm going to assume that all of you have been to our Friday beginner session, which shows you how to compare a conventional with an FHA loan. Now, that's the basic basic. It's the one thing you need to know. It's the one you've got to have in your back pocket. If you've not yet been to that Friday session, please go to our support center. Go to the event calendar and click on the link that you'd like to join. So let me go to the support center real quick. You can access our coaching call archive right here. And then we've got our event calendar right in the middle. So I, the whole reason I mentioned the Coaching Call Archive, it's really important to see the, the things that we've done in the past. There's a lot of great calls in there. Uh, last week we had one with Josh Metal, uh, going from price to advice. This is kind of the foundation of why you're a Mortgage Coach member. So uh, if you get a chance to check that out, please do go into that. Now in the event calendar, you can see that as you scroll down to the bottom, we've got our winter workshop, which is what we're looking at here today. But just above that is our Friday courses. These are the absolute beginner, basic, basic, basic. If you've never even touched the software, you want to get in on these classes. So we're going to give you a step-by-step -step walkthrough. We're going to help you prepare your first presentation. And we're going to get you comfortable with using the Ed software. So with that said, let's go ahead and start off our purchase transactions tutorial. Now, I'm going to start off really slow, and I'm just going to compare two different down payment options. So in this case, I'm actually going to call this one down payment options, and I'm going to make it a marketing report. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to pull off the contact information, the property address. This particular presentation can be shareable, and when you, when you talk about sharing things online, you want to try and remove as much personal information as you possibly can. When you make it a marketing presentation, it does it for you, so you don't have to worry about it. Now, the next step here is always include your, your realtor partner, your CPA, financial planner, whoever referred you. You want to make sure they're in the loop when this presentation gets viewed. So I'm going to put in my realtor at realtor.com. Now, friendly name, especially when you're making multiple reports for people, this, this really comes in handy because this helps you identify what this report is. Now, this is not a nickname for your client. This is a nickname for your presentation. So in this case, I'm doing a marketing presentation. It's already called Down Payment Options. But where am I going to send this? You know, Maybe I'm, I'm sending this out to uh, a referral list or something. Now, as you continue on the goal section, when you're doing a purchase loan, it's very important that you do select Purchase a New Home. 
And the reason for this is that it eliminates questions about the current mortgage. So you don't have to be, you don't have to go through all those questions in the wizard. Now for today's discussion, you're going to see I'm going to skip a lot. There's only a couple of things that I'm going to need to fill out, and that's because I'm not taking an application from my client. Rather, I'm, I'm preparing a marketing presentation that can be reused. Now, property value purchase price, it's the only one here in red. This is just going to help you to pre-fill some fields when you get into the products. So I will go ahead and enter that. And then we'll, I'm going to come back to this a little bit later. Uh, when we get into more advanced topics like MCC credits, I'm going to come back in here and show you how you can make a tax bracket, not only show the write-off that you're getting on the interest and property taxes, but the credit that you're getting on the interest up to a certain cap. So I know it's a little bit of an advanced feature, so we're going to start off kind of slow and just show you some down payment options. So I'm going to jump straight over to products. Now my first product is going to be a 20% down. And all I'm going to do is tag it for how much I want down. You can see Edge calculates my base loan amount for me. Then I need to put in the interest rate that I can get for them, say 4.65. And this is going to be on a 30-year term. Now remember, the term is in months, so make sure you enter your term in the form of months. If you enter it in years, you're going to end up with a really high payment. It's going to look kind of weird. Now the next step is choose a closing cost template. Now if you don't have your templates created yet, there's a quick and easy tutorial in our help menu that shows you how to take one of your fee worksheets or one of your GFEs and turn it into a template. It's very important when you do this. You don't want to have to go through the minutia of entering an appraisal fee, entering a credit fee, every, sing, every single time you do one of these. You want to have the majority of it filled out so you can just edit the fees that you need to edit. Now I'm going to go into the detail here and I've got a couple of fees already set up. So I'm actually going to choose my conventional purchase. And you can see I've got everything in there. I've got my origination, appraisal, credit, tax service, all the, all the stuff that I would need to have in here. Now, you notice that I don't have any prepaid escrows in here. And the reason I don't is because I'm actually going to allow Edge to do that for me. I'll show you that in just a moment when we get into the next screen. But you can earmark your reserves based on the number of months rather than making it a fee line item like I've done here. Now, finally, I need to make sure and put in my prepaid interest days. And then I'm going to hit my right arrow to continue. Now, at this point, I want to put in my hazard and taxes. Now, especially for purchase, if you're doing a marketing presentation like I am right now, it's, it's probably going to help you a lot to use these factor percentages instead of actual fees. Um, you'll find that each state is a little bit different on uh, the property tax, obviously. Hazard insurance is going to run right around the same. You're anywhere from 0 0.2 to 0 0.4. Um, in California, we're a little bit higher here. Uh, but of course, in your state, you, know, you can identify your factor by simply entering a dollar amount and then finding out where your factor is. Now because this is an 80% down loan, I'm sorry, 20% down loan, I don't need mortgage insurance. We've got 80% loan to value, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that part blank. But remember I told you about the reserves. We can earmark what we want for the reserves right here. So let's say three months of hazard insurance and two months of taxes. And when we do this, Edge automatically pipes in those figures into our closing cost detail. So if we scroll down to the very bottom, you'll see that there's two fields that are now already pre-filled. We don't have to worry about those. They're grayed out because these are being calculated based on what we entered in that previous screen. Now I've got this loan complete. Now it's time to show a different down payment option. So I'm going to hit add another product. Now the easiest way to move products between each other to reduce your data entry is to use this copy button. It becomes very important because you don't want to have to do the fees every time. You don't want to have to do you know, the hazards, the reserves, all that kind of good stuff. You can copy it directly from the one you just input. So I'm going to hit copy from and I'm going to copy my 20% down conventional. And all I'm going to do is call this one 10% down conventional. And I will change my down payment to 10%. And if there was a hit for going from 20 to 10%, I'd want to adjust my rate here. I'm going to assume they're the same in this case. And because I used the copy function, all my fees already came over for me. So if there's anything I needed to adjust, obviously I can't type in here. 
Instead, I need to adjust the figures that are, that are used to calculate this. So if I wanted to adjust something, I would need to go back into the closing cost detail. And let's say uh, something was different, maybe an underwriting fee. And I know that's normally for refis, but uh, let's say it's a little bit more. You guys get the idea. There's certain things that are going to be more expensive when you have a higher LTV loan. The next step is hit the right arrow. And because I use the copy function, my hazards, my taxes, and my reserves are all there. But I do need to account for my monthly mortgage insurance. This is a 90% loan, so I do have mortgage insurance here. I'm going to put that in as a 0.9 factor. And then I can leave the cutoff at 78%. For conventional loans, they're always going to drop at 78. And when it comes to government, it's a little bit different because government loans have to carry MI for the life of the mortgage, but they reduce over time. So I'll show you that when we get to our 203K loan. Now at this point, I've got two products against each other. And for the sake of being a beginner class, I do want to show you what this looks like. An unchecked product three, which is empty for me right now. I'm just going to show you the basics of what a down payment comparison looks like. So you can see we've just got a 20% versus a 10%. There's not a whole lot about this that's different. Obviously the payments are different because we're putting different amounts in. We've got 36 versus 66 going in. And we're going to save interest on that 20% because we've got a lower loan amount. I mean, that just stands to reason. Now you could get really detailed about this comparison and put in some reinvestment strategies, show what happens to the difference in the money on the down payment. Um, but for today's course, I'm going to keep it nice and simple and we're just going to isolate two products against each other. Now, I get the question a lot through our support center. What do I do if I only have one loan option available for my client? If I put in one loan in Edge, I'm not going to get the graphs. So what do you do? There's a couple of options. One, you can show varied down payment percentages like I've done here, but if you've already asked your client what their goals are and they've already told you, hey, look, it's going to be a 20% down loan or it's going to be a 10% or it's going to be an FHA, fine. You know what they're looking for, but you can always show a variation of that loan. So, for instance, if you know they only qualify for an FHA 3.5% down, show them what it looks like if they do that loan just standard and then in the second column, use the same loan and show a term reduction payment, show principal reduction, uh, show a payment to their savings, and then show net worth. There's always options about it. There's points to buy down the rate. That's a great comparison if you want to show points versus no points. But I want to stress how important it is to show two options in Edge. Showing one option is going to be a very empty report. All right, so this is the basic basic. Now let's talk about how we're going to show some advanced options. Now remember we said in the beginning we're going to be talking about MCC credits. Now the MCC credit is a mortgage credit certificate. It allows you to, to credit dollar for dollar up to a certain percentage of the interest that you're paying every year. Now if you're not familiar with mortgage credit certificates, you can always send us a note over support. We'll give you some general guidelines on it. But basically what it comes down to is if your lender offers it, it is a first-time home buyer credit or somebody who hasn't uh, had, a, had a principal stake in a house for three years, uh, they can still qualify for the MCC credit, but allows them to credit up to a certain percentage of the interest they're paying every year. And Edge makes it really easy for you to, to show this, but um, if you study the MCC credit a little bit, most people use this as a way to qualify borrowers that might not otherwise be able to afford certain payments because as you understand, when you get a tax credit, this is not just a write-off. This is a credit dollar for dollar. So you're not just getting a percentage of the dollars. So a lot of people will take a look at this and say, well, your pity payment is X. And when you subtract the, the monthly amount that you're getting from this credit, you can actually afford Y. So this, this makes it a little bit different. So if you do offer the MCC credit, you're kind of familiar with this, but I would urge you to study up on it, really get the guidelines straight, and understand why this is a selling opportunity for you. Now, how do you input an MCC credit inside Edge? It's in the affordability section. Now, there's a couple of things that need to come into play when you're talking about the mortgage credit certificate. One is it's going to show up in your tax benefit. Now, the tax benefit will only be shown in your Edge presentations if you choose to enter a tax bracket. 
you don't know your borrower's tax bracket, or in this case, like it's a marketing report, I don't, I really don't have an income to, to base this on. So I'm going to kind of target market the area I want. Now, anywhere from 60 to 100,000 as a single, that's going to be a 25% bracket. So I'm going to enter 25 right here. Now, if you want to see a, a better view of what those brackets look like, hit Find Tax Bracket. This is going to give you a real easy little matrix that shows you how to figure out what the tax bracket is for your client. But as we talk about MCC credits, we're talking about a credit that's going to appear in the tax benefit line. And in order to get tax benefit to show up inside Edge, you've got to have a bracket here. So make sure you enter that first. Your next step is eyeball your guidelines. Find out what you can actually credit them. In California, we have a 20% a, uh, credit. So I'm going to put 20% of the interest that they do every year up to $2,000. That is the max that they can credit against per year. Now, once they've exceeded that amount, the additional interest they're paying, if they're paying more than that, is still going to be a write-off. So it's still going to be part of the tax benefit, but it's not going to be part of the MCC credit at that point. Now, by doing that, by, by simply entering that, that one factor right there, I've now enabled this credit for any loan on my, uh, on my presentation. So as I'm going through, you're going to see that when I go to my products, I now have a new checkbox at the bottom that says Apply MCC Credit. And when you do that, it's going to increase your tax benefit based on the amount that they can credit. Now, I'm not going to go too in-depth on the MCC. I know I've covered it in, in detail already. But if you'd like more information on it, please send us a note over at support at mortgagecoach.com. We're always happy to give you further information on it. And I'll tell you, honestly, the best way, if you're not offering this right now and you want to look it up, type in MCC credit in the Google search bar and then your state name. And when you do that, you're going to find guidelines all over the place. And they're going to be very specific to your state. You'll understand what the caps and maximums are. You'll understand who can, who can do it. Uh, I can tell you that almost every loan program is eligible for it, from FHA, conventional, jumbos, and, and, uh, and conformings. I mean, there's, uh, there's not a whole lot that are not able to do this MCC credit. So it's a, it's a great tool to have in your arsenal. All right, so we've got the MCC credit in there. I can now apply it to any of the loans that I've input. So I'm going to go ahead and apply it to all of them. And now it's time to talk about construction loans. Now, in this story, we're looking at a $300,000 house. And we're showing the borrower a way to do a 20% down conventional, a 10% down with MI. But what about construction? What if they didn't want to buy a house that's already made? What if they wanted to build their own? Now, I will tell you that usually you can get a little bit more house out of doing a construction versus a pre-made property. And the reason is you're building it yourself. There's no pre-assigned value to it. There's no appreciation over time. It's whatever you think it's going to be worth, basically, whatever your, your originator's worksheet thinks it's going to be worth. So if you're comparing this against uh, pre-built properties like I am today, you're probably going to use about the same purchase price. Let's call it 300, just like we had before. And I'm not going to do the legwork on it, so I'm going to go ahead and copy from, and I'm going to copy that 20% down conventional. Now this has copied everything over for me. And for the, for the sake of a, a construction, everything in the loan is going to be exactly the same. This is a construction to permanent, but I do need to tell Edge how long my construction period is. So let's call this one 20% down construction. Now in order to do that, you're going to hit the construction button. And when you do it, it's going to ask you for two items. How long is the construction period? And what's the rate for that period? Now we've built in logic. So Edge knows that if you put in a 12 month period, you're going to be, you're going to have an interest only period for that 12 months. And the rate is going to be based on what you put in here. So let's say it's four and a half. Oftentimes, it's, a, it's the same rate as the interest rate. Um, it does differ at some points, but uh, the one thing that's important to remember is in, in a construction loan, you're going to have a draw schedule in the beginning of the loan, and it's going to talk about exactly how much money is going out at different increments. The problem is when you're looking at your LOS and you're trying to prepare a construction loan, you have no idea what the draw schedule is. So what your LOS is doing is it's taking the total interest that you would pay over that construction period and it's dividing it in half. That's what we've done here in Edge. So when we're showing the interest paid over time, that first year is going to be construction. 
we're showing exactly half of the interest that would uh, be possible from that construction period. So again, two items that you would need to enter, the length of the period and the rate for the period. That's all you need to do to make it a construction loan. Now because I copied, my fees are already in there, I don't have to worry about those. I'm, I'm doing okay there. If I needed to make any edits here, I could edit my, uh, let's say for instance, mortgage insurance or something, but in this case, it's 20% down, so I don't need to do anything with that. So my final option is going to be a 203k loan. So I'm going to use that copy button again. It's going to be your best friend, everybody. <laughs> Pay attention to the copy. It's very important. It's going to save you a lot of time. Now, in the 203k loan, you're using the improved value of a property. So if somebody's buying a fixer-upper, it's at, listed at 280, you know, you're, you're estimating it's going to be worth 300 with the, with the repairs done. Um, so I'm going to use the exact same purchase price as I did for the other ones. The difference on this loan is, one, I need to call it what it is. Oops. And then I'm going to change my down payment. And this is the magic of the 203k loan is you can still get away with a really low down payment and have an improvement loan, which oftentimes you can't on construction. It's going to be 10 or 20%. You're not going to get the really low down payment option on a construction loan. Uh, for FHA, we usually get a little bit lower rate, and of course, the reason is they know they're killing us with MI. So uh, when we look at this, the FHA 203K is it, it very likely will be the most expensive of these of these products that we're showing. However, it is the least down payment. So when you're talking about being a consultative originator, you're asking questions like, "What does your financial picture look like? Would it hurt you to do a 20% down payment, or must it be a three and a half?" And if they come back to you and look, man, I only got 10 grand in the bank, and the only way I'm going to be able to do this is with an FHA loan. You know that your FHA is going to be the best one, but at the same time, you need to prepare them. You know, they 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 need the education to understand that that mortgage insurance is going to last for the life of the loan. It's going to decline over time, so it'll get smaller and smaller. But the fact is, you probably want to get them out of that loan as soon as possible, as soon as they're able to. So this gives you an open door. You can now have that conversation about their next loan while you're closing their current loan. You can't ask for more than that. All right, so I've got my 203K in there. Uh, one thing I need to change is I need to change it, uh, the FHA question. I need to choose yes. And the reason I need to is because I, I, I'm going to need that upfront in my P section. Now when I hit the right arrow, you can see I've now got the upfront MIP. I'm going to go ahead and pop that in there. And I am going to finance it in. And finally, I need to make sure and account for the mortgage insurance. Now, high LTV mortgage insurance on an FHA loan, it's a 1.35 uh, factor. And a couple of things that are really important about FHAs, like I mentioned before, it has to go for the life of the loan. So for our MI cutoff month, you can think of this as the minimum amount of MI months, and in this case, it's 360. It needs to go for the life of the loan, so I'm going to put 360 there. But what most clients don't know about mortgage insurance on FHA loans is that it does decline over time. Every year, it's recalculated based on the average 12 months balance. And if clients are thinking they're going to pay this 360 or 325 for for 30 years. It's completely incorrect. In fact, it sets you apart because now you can educate them on what this is. FHA loans have a stigma around them because of this never-ending mortgage insurance. But what people don't realize is that by the end of the loan, if you, as long as you check this box right here, that, that mortgage insurance amount is going to decline every year. And by the end of this loan, it's only about 15 bucks. I mean, it's not 323 anymore. And the, you know, obviously, your clients don't know this, so this is a great point where you can educate them. Now, part of the EDGE presentation shows a payment stream. And when you're looking at the payment stream on an FHA loan, if you've done it correctly, you're going to see changes every 12 months on the payment. So let's take a look at this. Now, we're looking at the analysis screen right now. There are several different options against each other. You're going to find that one program is always the highest cost option. And in that case, it's the one that doesn't have a graph next to it. Everything else is being compared against that loan. Now, as I noted early, you don't have to do all four of these options. I'm showing you all four of these options because I want you to see the difference between them. However, most people are just going to do these first two, or you know, they're just going to do an FHA versus a 5% conventional. They're going to do different options. 
what I wanted you to see in, in building this, this scenario is that these are all exactly the same property value purchase price. These are just different options you can offer. So don't feel like you never have another option that you can show your client, whether it's showing them how to pay an additional point to lower the rate, or whether it's showing them what would happen if they wait too long before they actually close this loan. There's always options to show. Now as I continue to go through this, I made this a marketing presentation, so I don't need to enter contact information. And I just need to get to the end. So now I'm selecting the total cost analysis, and I need to make sure and include my payment notes. And I'm pretty diligent about this because, you know, a lot of people put out P&I quotes, and uh, I, I got to tell you, it's it, it sounds to me like they're trying to hide something. So when I put these out, I always include every part of that pity payment. So it's including hazard insurance, property tax, and mortgage insurance where applicable. Now, this bit of text right here will actually be tied to a double asterisk that will be right next to your payment on the final presentation. So for those of you who are kind of compliance nerds like me, this is going to be a good friend for you. Anytime you have additional information you need to enter about a loan product, this is the best place to put it because it appears right beneath the payment and it's, it's tied to it by asterisk. He emailed me already, so I just replied to it. about that everybody. Okay, let's get back into our data meeting. So the final step here is we want to be able to generate this presentation. We need to send it out. And I'm going to show you for you new users that are on the call, uh, when you hover over these buttons, you'll see that there's different options you can choose right above them. I call them jump buttons, but uh, really they just allow you to jump to different points in the presentation. So I'm going to jump to the very last screen, which is where I select what kind of presentation I'm going to do, so how I'm going to deliver this. And I would, I would encourage you, you know, most of the time you're going to choose an email link. This is the one that is dynamic, it can change, you know, if you update a rate, you don't have to send a new presentation out. Um, it, it's, it's the one you're going to use for 99% of your transactions. And I will tell you, there's going to be people that, for some reason, they don't have access to a browser, whatever. I, I, I kind of don't buy that, but uh, you know, if people need a PDF on occasion, fine. You can send them a PDF. You can print this out if you need to. But I will tell you that, you know, 99% of the time, you're going to send an email link. And it's very important because this is the one that can actually contain your video. This is the one that can update on the fly. This is the one that has a transaction record behind it so you can see what the past iterations are. So I would always choose email link. Now, you definitely want to be notified when the report is viewed. That's going to send you your rate watch alert, and it's going to send you uh, your, your, your emails when somebody has viewed this presentation. If you are using the click to call credits, you can enable the call button here. And then of course, if you've got a partner email address in that first screen that I showed you back in the client screen, it'll give you the checkbox to send an edge view alert to your partner. Very important when you're, when you're talking with a realtor or a financial planner that has referred somebody to you, uh, the easiest way to keep them in the loop is let them know when the client's been viewing it. So they'll get an email just like you do that says, you know, John Client has viewed XY presentation for three minutes and 40 seconds. And then they'll have a link to that presentation. So your realtor partner, your financial planner, CPA, they can click on that link and see exactly what you've delivered to them. So it just keeps them in the loop. It's going to build your referral base. It's going to help in just making sure that everybody's on the same page. Finally, make sure there's a quote date. Anytime you put out a quote, anytime you put out a rate and a payment, you better have a date on there. If you don't have a date on there, you could be calling the question for a rate you quoted. So make sure to cover yourself. Always tie a date to the rate that you're quoting. Last step, generate the link. Now at this point, it's going to pull up the short link for you, and this link is available for you to share with your clients. And you can right-click on this link and hit copy, and you can actually paste it into an email that you're going to send out. Now there's going to be a couple more trainings during this series that are going to talk about the importance of email and video communication. So I would encourage you to attend those. Uh, learn how to deliver a quality email that's going to make sure that your borrower is going to click on your link. Uh, but we're going to show you a couple of tips and tricks about that as we go forward in this series. But with that being said, I think I'm going to go ahead and close the call for today. Um, oops, a little error there. I'm going to close the call for today. 
if, uh, if you have any questions, please do contact us at support. You can always get there by hitting help in your Edge presentation here. This is going to take you right over to our knowledge base where you have access to all our quick links that I was talking about earlier, but you can always submit a ticket here. So either email us at support at mortgagecoach.com or submit a ticket through this knowledge base. We're always happy to help you. We want to make sure that you have the tools necessary to educate your borrowers so don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you very much, everybody. We're going to be doing this again. We've got a lot of back-to-back -back calls here. Uh, There's going to be one at noon Pacific time today, and that's going to be uh, Wichai, who's one of our, our success coaches and account managers. He's going to be going through uh, the importance of Edge Live. So if you haven't seen Edge Live, uh, definitely want to get on this call. It's going to show you how to make it work between different browsers, iOS devices, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, but with that being said, uh, I'll go ahead and give you a break for now and hope to see you at noon. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.